Hi everyone, welcome back to another educational video from Med School EU. My name is Andre and today we will be discussing our last topic and our last lecture on the biology unit of IMAT uh, specifications. And so today we are going to talk about the menstrual cycle and the homeostasis of the menstrual cycle. So first of all, in terms of the menstrual cycle, that's the typically known as the the period or the, the 28 days of the female uh, cycle that undergoes changes in its uh, reproductive organs. And so uh, let's first of all talk about the uh, organs that are involved and the hormones that are involved in the menstrual cycle. So we're going to have uh, the ovary that will be involved, of course, uh, that will have its own ovarian cycle. And the ovary is going to release estrogen and progesterone. So these are uh, the, the hormones that will be released by the ovary and uh, they will be used to regulate different uh, systems in terms of the ovarian cycle and the uterine cycle. So we're gonna have the uterus, of course, involved as well. So we have two cycles, they will be in sync with each other. So one is going to correspond to the other and they will be maintained by hormones. The two hormones that are primary in terms of after ovulation will be the estrogen and progesterone and they will be involved throughout the entire menstrual cycle. However, they're predominantly going to be in higher concentrations after ovulation. And we'll talk about what ovulation means and what all of those things entail. Now, the other uh, system that involves releasing hormones in order to contribute to the menstrual cycle is going to be the anterior pituitary gland. Previously, we, uh, we have talked about the uh, posterior pituitary gland that releases our ADH hormone that uh, regulates the water pressure and, and the water balance within the body. And here we're talking about the anterior pituitary gland. So it is located in the brain right underneath the hypothalamus and is going to be releasing two hormones. One is called the follicle stimulating hormone and the other is called luteinizing hormone. Most uh, commonly they will be called FSH for follicle stimulating hormone and LH for luteinizing hormone. And these are the names that I will interchangeably use uh, for the rest of this lecture. So now let's take a look what kind of effects these will have when their levels are going to rise and when they're going to drop depending on the ovarian and the uterine cycle. So let's take a look at both of those and how they work in sync in order to regulate the menstrual cycle. So it's important to remember that the menstrual cycle involves the 28 days. So it's the entire month that uh, a female goes through in terms of their changes in, in the reproductive organs. And it, this involves uh, the uh, menstruation. It involves, uh, you know, typically known as the period it involves their um, ovulation as well after the two weeks since the start of menstruation. And we're gonna talk about all of those and how they change. And this is all attributed to the change in the hormone levels. So let's see how this works. One thing to remember is menstrual cycle begins at the onset of menstruation. And of course, menstruation is the typical period that lasts about four to eight days, depending on, on the female, depending on, on, on the month, depending on the, a lot of different factors, but on average, four to eight days. So this image that popped up over here involves the ovary, and it's, it's going to show the stages that lead up to ovulation. And we're gonna talk about what is ovulation. And so this involves the ovarian cycle right here. So the ovary is responsible for developing a follicle a follicle that is going to make a gamete. And we talked about gametes in, in the reproduction unit and when we talked about you know Punnett squares and genetics and all of these things. So here, um, this involves the ovarian cycle in the female that will produce its egg, its gamete, and how it does it. So first of all, we are going to form a lot of potential female gametes that start to develop and they will be occurring in, in this area right here. So next, it's going to develop into a primary 
follicle. So the follicle that is li listed right there would be called the primary follicle because it grows the biggest, it takes the most nutrients, and it grows the fastest. And that is the one that will be selected until the next stage. So the primary follicle will, um, will become a secondary follicle right here. Now the secondary follicle will then grow and develop into an ovarian follicle, which is the one that's larger over here. And as you can see, the ovarian follicle will now start to develop a gamete. And as soon as it's ready at ovulation, so typically at about 14 days since the start of the menstrual cycle, since the onset of menstruation, we are going to have ovulation uh, where uh, a, a gamete is going to be released into the fallopian tube. And we'll, we'll talk about that and how it corresponds to the uterine cycle. So a quick summary of the ovarian cycle is we begin with a uh, plenty of potential female gametes that start to develop within the ovary. Then it would form into a secondary follicle. Once the primary follicle is selected, it will then grow into an ovarian follicle. And then as soon as it's ready, it is going to form a, uh, is going to release a gamete at ovulation. Now what's remaining from the follicle is going to be called a corpus luteum. And it's going to be very important to know this term corpus luteum for you to understand how a gamete is going to be fertilized and how it's going to maintain its structure after ovulation so here we will be talking about the uterine cycle so we'll begin here on the upper left hand corner uh, where we're going to talk about the start of menstruation. This is the beginning of menstruation. As you can see, the endometrium, endometrium is the inner lining of the uterus, is going to be uh, shedding its capillaries that it made. And this is why there is going to be uh, bleeding involved within the menstruation. Uh, and, and at this point in time, we are going to have uh, development of a follicle probably the primary follicle that will be developing. Primary into secondary will be happening during this first stage during menstruation. Now in the second stage, moving along to the right, the new endometrium will start to slowly develop. As you can see, it's not as thick, but it's starting to develop its capillaries, it's starting to form, and the endometrium just begins to develop there. And here an ovarian follicle is produced so so this is going to be coordinated in sync with the ovarian cycle so in second stage once once menstruation is over maybe this is entering into the second week so closer and closer to ovulation we are going to start developing the endometrium and again i'm gonna name this endometrium the inner lining of of the uh, uterus that will develop its capillaries and these red parts are going to be the capillaries that are running there. In step three of the uterine cycle, the endometrium is going to be maintained. So it's going to fully grow into its, into its, its shape, into all the capillaries it needs to make. And it's going to be maintained uh, the same way until the corpus luteum is formed. And the corpus luteum is formed only after the gamete is released. So in step four of the uterine cycle, this is exactly what happens. Ovulation takes place. And ovulation, when it takes place, the endometrium is most developed and contains many blood vessels. So it's got its capillaries. And now, as you can see, the gamete will be traveling in the fallopian tube. And this is why it is mentioned that during ovulation is, is the only time a female can get pregnant. So during uh, typically the, the, the second week or 14 days after the start of their menstrual cycle, that they can uh, develop a gamete that will be released into the uterus where the uterus is finally formed to receive the gamete and to nurture the gamete. And uh, that is the, the time when the female is most fertile. So uh, I wanted to go through the stages of how the hormones are going to be acting on the uh, endometrium, how it's going to be acting on the ovary, and how the ovary will be releasing its hormones in order to uh, develop into a, a proper um, gamete. So 
Uh, let's talk about the uh, menstrual cycle in terms of its hormones. And here's a chart of the level of hormones. So we are going to begin with menstruation. So again, the first step of the menstrual cycle is menstruation. That is going to last four to eight days. And during menstruation, we are going to have a, a continuous release of LH and FSH from the anterior pituitary gland. And as you can see, the LH and the FSH uh, right here will be uh, rising and rising. That will be contributing to their effects. And what these hormones are going to do now, because of their rising level, is they will st uh, stimulate the secretion of estrogen from the follicle. You can most often see this happening right here on this diagram as uh, as the FSH and the LH levels are going to rise throughout those days there is slowly decline here as well but they will remain more or less constant in this area in these in these few days after the menstruation and at the end of menstruation then this is when the estrogen levels will be steadily rising because the LH and the FSH hormones will be stimulating the follicle and the follicle is responsible for releasing estrogen now the second part is the increased uh, concentration of estrogen that is acting as an inhibitor. So it's going to be inhibiting the production of LH and FSH. Another effect that increased uh, a concentration of estrogen has is it stimulates the uh, endometrium to grow, thicken and develop its capillaries. And what's, what's kind of interesting in the way it happens, and, and this is still uh, a little bit difficult to understand because estrogen is an inhibitor to LH and FSH, but at very, very high concentrations at its very peak, it causes a spike in LH and FSH that is very, very close to ovulation. So it, it is an inhibitor at the start, but when estrogen has a high concentration, it is going to um, promote a surge of, uh, of LH and FSH concentrations. And finally, the last part of the, the first half of the cycle um, is that an ov ovulation occurs because of the increased uh, concentration of luteinizing hormone. And how this uh, luteinizing hormone does its ovulation is it causes the dominant follicle to burst and shed the gamete into the oviduct. And then the follicle will, of course, form the corpus luteum. Now, because of the formation of the corpus luteum, it is now going to be responsible for releasing progesterone and to some degree estrogen as well. And, the, and you can see those levels to be rising right here, progesterone and the estrogen in the blue will also be rising after ovulation occurs. And that is because of the formation of the corpus luteum. It is responsible for those things. And what is the function of progesterone and estrogen at that point is to maintain the lining of the uterus because it is ready to receive an embryo. And this is why the menstruation doesn't occur immediately after ovulation or maybe a few days after ovulation. It occurs two weeks after is because of the high levels of progesterone and estrogen after ovulation. As well, this increased progesterone is going to inhibit FSH. And what this means is that no more new follicles will be formed during this time. So during this, this time after ovulation, no new follicles formed. And this is why the FSH levels will continuously fall as well as the LH uh, levels. However, this works as a negative feedback system because low FSH and low LH are going to cause a lower stimulation of the corpus luteum. So the corpus luteum will not be stimulated as much. Therefore, the, the levels of progesterone and estrogen will begin to decrease. And of course, the corpus luteum will degenerate. Now, as soon as the corpus luteum degenerates, the progesterone levels and the estrogen levels will fall. And because they fall, they will stop inhibiting FSH 
and then the FSH and the uh, LH will then again begin to rise and this will cause another cycle of menstruation and it will cause the endometrium to shed its lining and it, it will cause a period to occur and now the whole cycle begins all over again. So this concludes our lecture for today. And finally, this is the last lecture for biology. So in the next one, guess what? We're gonna be moving on to chemistry. And the first topic in chemistry that we will cover for the IMAT is going to be the composition of matter. So stay tuned and that video will be out soon as well.